people are popping in. Popping in quickly. Good morning, good morning, Brian and Sherry. Good morning to everyone. We are going to be starting worship right now. I am Pastor Amy Barsh Odal. If you are on, which everybody is on Zoom, let's please mute at this moment. Okay. So it says in my script to, to, to pause at that point, and, but it doesn't tell me to unmute. So I have to write that in my thing because I always forget. <laughs> Again, I'm Pastor Amy Barsh Odal. I am so glad that you are here. We do not believe it is an accident that you are here. Salem's mission is to share God's love. Welcome to Salem Lutheran Church and School. This worship service is being recorded and will be available on Salem's YouTube channel this week. Um, if you are watching the replay of today's worship, I am welcoming you as well. Again, please type in who you are and where you're watching from. It helps us connect with you. It is another way for us to be in community together. You may also type in public prayer requests in the chat box at any time during worship. Um, you may also put private prayer requests on our website. So if you are a visitor or need more information about Salem and the activities that are going on, please check out our website at SalemLutheranGlendale.org. SalemLutheranGlendale.org. Again, that's where you can put private prayer requests. There's a button for that. There, there are also, there's a lot of information on that site. So please check it out. I have a ton of announcements. So I'm going to talk fast like I always do, but even faster maybe. And so if, I, if you can't catch up with me, you can watch the replay, right? That's the beauty. And if you ever go to YouTube, you can actually put it on faster or slower, okay? I don't know if you knew that. So you could actually make me slow down as I talk or fast, or go faster, <laughs> okay? So either one. But here are my announcements. First of all, there is a Zoom update coming. You may have already updated yourself um, recently, but there is a Zoom update coming. It says that something will happen if you don't do it. So please try to figure that out. I don't know if it means it turns everybody's face green or what it does, but try to make sure you figure out that Zoom update. If you need help, contact us at the church office and we'll find somebody to help you out. Um, next week is God's Work Our Hands Sunday. If you've got one of those beautiful yellow t-shirts, we'd love for you to wear those to worship. So we see those yellow t-shirts. Um, I know that the women of Salem have a hygiene kit project that they are sponsoring. Um, yesterday, my, uh, my daughter Maggie and I went to the Rose Bowl and did a philanthropy project by helping build the Rose Bowl float for the parade. If anyone would like to join me next week at 10 o'clock, uh, the Burbank Rose Bowl float project building. You can do that. Um, I will put some information on the on the website about that. Um, we have a bunch of book studies that are going to be starting this fall. They are all starting this month. So again, check out your e-news or the website for ways to sign up for those book studies. I think there's two or three of them. I can't even remember right now. There's a lot of options for you. Um, I want to thank you to all of the musicians. Last Sunday, we had a fabulous concert. Who was there? Raise your hand. Clap. It was wonderful. If you weren't there, it happens to be up on our Facebook page, so you can watch the replay there. I was unable to make it because I was doing my colonoscopy prep, which my colonoscopy went well, so if anybody was wondering. <laughs> Yay. If you haven't had one and you're over 45, please do that. It's important. Um, but it is on the website. So go check that out. Or if you want to watch it again. And why were we doing that concert? Why were we, we were doing that concert because we love to enjoy and um, share music with each other, of course. But we also did it to celebrate our fundraiser that the Women of Salem were sponsoring for the stained glass windows. There will be an announcement in the e-news, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview. I believe the the windows will be ordered or were ordered because we raised enough money Yay for the windows. So you'll find out all the specifics. They will be in the e-news um, coming up this Thursday. Okay. So you will be seeing windows by Christmas. I hope a <laughs> new window or restored windows by Christmas. Um, next, uh, next Saturday, September 11th, um, Colleen Colgrove's Memorial will be outdoors. <laughs> Oops, we'll be outdoors at Salem in the courtyard at 6 p.m. So that is September 11th at 6 p.m. The Colleen Colgrove's memorial service, if you'd like to come to that. Um, we have a new bishop that will be ordained, or not ordained, I'm sorry. The new bishop will be installed next Sunday, September 12th at 4 p.m. You can watch that on um, several places. There are several different ways to watch that. 
Um, and what do I want to say about that? We also, though, on Sunday next week, actually, this, this is coming up. Let's put a pin in that. I will come back to that. Um, this week, um, I completed uh, lots of classes I've been taking all summer long. One of them was stepping up to supervision. So I'm going to be a really great supervisor <laughs> as part of my ministry. Um, also, I took a hybrid uh, ministry course. So maybe you'll see some more bells and whistles on our on what we're doing on the computers. Um, and we did teacher training, Salem teacher training. Um, so because of that, I want to say thanks to Pastor Barsh, who is stepping in to preach for me because I just had a hard time getting everything done. Okay, so he's going to be preaching for me today. So thank you, Dad. Uh, and then that brings me to my final thing. If I forgot anything else, um, I may just pop it in sometime during the worship service. You never know. Um, but our COVID protocol is this. We are remote worship on Sunday mornings right now um, until further notice. Uh, but, but beginning September 11th, September 12th, we will have in-person outdoor worship on Sundays at 430 in the courtyard. It will be a service of prayer scripture and communion it will be about 20 minutes long and confirmation students will be helping me to lead the worship service and then they will have class following that okay um, the pandemic continues we are loving our neighbors by doing what we can to help end this pandemic and encouraging everyone to get their vaccination so with that being said i also want to tell you that our covid protocol for the the school is that only students and staff are allowed on school grounds from 745 to 315 every day. Only students and staff. If you are a church member who needs to come to church for some reason, we will meet you in the admin building or outside in the courtyard. Okay, so you just need to call the office about that. But you are not only students and staff, not even parents are allowed on the school grounds during school. We're all the safety layers of precaution for our children. Okay, it is seven, it is seven minutes after 10. I spoke as fast as I could. Let's start worship because that's why we're here. We're here to worship God. Let's begin. God does not reside in one place. God is everywhere. Today, this space where I am and where you are is holy ground. Here at Salem, we believe there is no person or created thing outside the active love and grace of God made known to us in the person of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, throughout the ages you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. Let's sing God Loved the World.
continue with the reading. We continue with the reading from Isaiah chapter three. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Do we have our readers ready for the Psalm 146? If not, I will continue with the next part. Yes, we do. Okay, awesome. Emily and Freddie are going to be doing Psalm 146. I will Thank praise so much the Lord as long, the Lord as, I live. as long as I live. We continue with the reading. We continue with the reading. Chapter two. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your act of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and became judges of evil with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? 
you do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for Abby, all. Abby. What is What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or a sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So by faith itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm just going to make sure everybody stays muted, including my dad, until it is time to be unmuted because I believe I keep hearing dogs barking. <laughs> and that's just, it might be my dog, it might be my dad's dog, I'm not sure, but let's stay muted until we're, we're done. So thank you for reading that, uh, Brant. Um, if so, by faith, by faith by itself, if no works is dead. So let's have the children come forward to the screen if they can. I have a little children's message for you. So if I can see some kids coming forward, you know, I don't know about this, but maybe this screen has empowered me to think that I have a voice, but there's a song that I was thinking about singing and it has to do with washing my hands because um, there are many parts of our body like head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Anybody know that song too? It reminds us of all the different parts of our body. So head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes and eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Those are all things that God has given us. And those are all ways that we can use our bodies to show kindness to our neighbor, right? That's part of what the text was telling us today is how to be kind to our neighbor. So um, I was thinking about this. If there's any kids out there, is there some way that you can use a your part of your body, maybe your hands, um, maybe your eyes, maybe your mouth? How could you be kind to someone with a part of your body? Does anybody know? Anybody? That's a, is that a hard question? Yeah, let's see. I see somebody raising their hand over there. Who is that? Benny, do you have an answer for me or is or are you just raising your hand to say that's one way you could use your hands? Yep, that's one way you could use your hands. Anybody else have a way? Okay, Roland, do you want to say something? You could hug somebody. You could hug someone. That's a wonderful way to love your neighbor, to show kindness to your neighbor. It would be to hug someone. We have to be a little careful right now with the COVID, right? But that would be a wonderful way to do that, okay? So I actually have a song that our camp has shares with, shared with us because one of the ways they said that we could love our neighbor is by washing our hands. It, it's a way for us to stay healthy and a way for us to help other people stay healthy, no matter if you're in a pandemic or not. So let's watch this song. And it's available on YouTube if you ever want to watch it again, okay? So let me share my screen and my mouse isn't working very well, so I have to use my finger here. Hello everyone, this is Nate Maxwell Doherty, your camp director at Luther Glen Farm. Your safety is our number one priority. We've been asked, what's LRCC's stance on COVID-19? Well, we're against it. We take pride in the consistent cleaning of both of our sites, El Camino Pines and Luther Glen Farm, and have added additional measures to ensure the safety of all of our guests. But we know that there's more that can be done. Washing your hands is one of the best ways to keep everyone and yourself safe. And camp would like to be a part of that experience with you in the form of a song. Washing should take minimally 20 to 30 seconds but why not sing Chantilly during that hand washing? I've recruited my friend Alex so we can learn this song together. All right, so here are the steps. It goes rinse, rinse, soap, soap, scrub, scrub, clean, clean, rinse, rinse, soap, soap. This is where it gets hard. Together, cross over. It's wild. So let's try that all together. It goes rinse, rinse, soap, soap, Scrub, scrub, clean, clean, rinse, rinse, soap, soap, together, cross over. All right, let's do the whole song. 
I got a friend inside named Jesus Christ and he lives in me constantly. Makes me want to jump, jump, makes me want to shout, woohoo! Really knocks me out, out, out. There ain't nothing in this world that makes me feel this way. That's why I act so funny. Cost no money. Makes me feel real great to anticipate tomorrow. Oh, baby, that's what I like. I said rinse, rinse, soap, soap, scrub, scrub, clean, clean. Rinse, rinse, rope, soap, together, cross over. Rinse, rinse, soap, soap, scrub, scrub, clean, clean. Rinse, rinse, soap, soap, together, cross over. Rinse, rinse, soap, soap, scrub, scrub, clean, clean. Rinse, rinse, rope, soap, together, cross over. Rinse, rinse, soap, soap, scrub. Scrub, scrub, clean, clean. Oh, baby, that's what I like. Now, if you would like a PDF of that song, you can head online to lrcchome.com. We've got it under the tab Health Update. Download that PDF, put it right by your sinks, and sing along with us. Stay safe. All right, so washing our hands is one of our ways that we can. To LRCC's second whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Did I? Uh, this week we decided to take a little bit. Hold on a second. Up to us. Hans, if you could start our next song, I will try to figure out how to stop this while you're doing that. Does that work? Good thing. I have climbed the highest mountain. I have run through the fields all Oh my gosh, how good.
apologize about those uh, technical difficulties. My mouse ran out of batteries and I could not find how to stop that song. So I hope we're all back. Can you give me a thumbs up, Dave Siebels? Are we all okay? Okay, I'm, I, he's on the front of my screen here. All right, Pastor Barsh is gonna be sharing a message about uh, James uh, that we read today. So I'm going to shoot this over to Pastor Barsh if you could unmute yourself and ready to go. Thank you. Are we ready? You're ready. Go ahead. Thank you. All right. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Amy asked me to preach this Sunday for her. And I said, what's the text? And she said, it's uh, the second chapter of James. And I said, I've been in the ministry for 49 years, and I've never preached on the book of James. And she said, good luck. So here we are. It's said that in... Uh, a wealthy suburb of Chicago, Evanston, there's an exclusive school that's attended by children of wealthy Gold Coast people. One day, the teacher in that wealthy school asked her very privileged pupils to write a composition on the subject of poverty. One little girl started her literary piece like this. Once there was a poor little girl her father was poor, her mother was poor, her nanny was poor, her cook was poor, her chauffeur was poor, and her butler was poor. In fact, everybody in the house was very, very poor. I really don't think that girl had ever been exposed to anyone who was truly poor. It reminds me though of a Peanuts cartoon written by Charles, Charles Schultz several years ago. Charles Schultz is from St. Paul, Minnesota and a devout Christian, as some of you remember. In this particular cartoon, Snoopy is shivering out in a snowstorm besides an empty food dish. He looks longingly and expectantly towards the house. Lucy comes out, and instead of putting anything in Snoopy's dish, Lucy, Lucy simply says, go in peace, be warm, and be filled. And then she turns, goes back into the house, and shuts the door. In the last frame, you see a confused Snoopy looking toward the house, shivering, hungry, and utterly baffled. If that doesn't make you laugh, it makes you cry. There, there's been a story that's been recently on Facebook, the, the last couple of weeks, actually. And it talks about a man who came into a church dressed in smelly rags and was ignored by the congregation. The following week, the same man came dressed in expensive clothes and was treated like royalty. Four weeks later, the congregation found out that that man had been elected to be their new pastor. Our little, our lesson from the book of James carries much the same message. Here are the words, please listen to them. James wrote, my brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, you must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes to your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man with filthy clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, say sit here, here's a good seat. But say to the poor man, oh, stand over here, or you can sit on the floor. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with your evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith, to inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? This is one place where the teachings of Christ definitely clash with the ways of the world, how we view and treat the poor. This discrepancy is apparent in a question we often ask about people, a question which apparently we do not give much thought, we might ask someone referring to a third party, how much do you think he or she is worth? What we're asking in that question is, how much money do you think he or she has? But think about the question for a second. How much do you think he or she is worth? The truth of the matter is, do we, do va do we value the worth of a person more than a person without wealth. I wonder why we would do that. 
It may be because we want to have wealth ourselves. It's only natural. We want the best things in our lives for ourselves, and we admire people who have already attained them, and we want to associate with them, perhaps the illusion that maybe it'll rub off on us. Years ago, Dr. Harry Emerson Fosdick of Riverside Church in New York remarked, our grandparents were brought up to say, what shall I do to be saved? But the present generation has been brought up to say, what do I do to get rich? It's a common attitude in our times. Above all, so we want to be successful. We want to have nice things. And so we admire those who have climbed the ladder of success themselves. Besides, sometimes we may need to gain the favor of a wealthy person to further our own ends. They can open doors for us, and so we treat them with respect. The poor can do nothing for us, and so we devalue them. Perhaps we treat poor differently because they make us feel guilty. Who hasn't had the experience of being approached by a homeless person asking for a handout and feeling afterwards guilty for turning him away or making him in some way feel inferior? I suspect that all of us have experienced that at one time or another. And then we turn to the teachings of Jesus. In his very first public sermon, Jesus said, blessed are the poor. Blessed are you when you're hungry. Blessed are you when you mourn. Blessed are you when people hate you because of me. And then we encounter Jesus' parable about the sheep and the goat in Matthew. He wrote, he said, when the Son of Man comes in glory and the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne and all the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. He'll put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink. When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the Enter into the eternal fire preferred for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick in prison and you did not look after me. Th then they will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or, or thirsty or a stranger or, or needing clothes? or sick, or in prison, and not help you? And he will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do, for the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did not do for me. It's a scary parable, especially in a society like ours, that determines a person's worth based on his or her bank account. But this is where the teachings of Jesus clash quite differently with the values of society and how we treat the poor. Scripture is clear. Our closeness to God is reflected in how we treat those less fortunate than ourselves. Listen to that again. Our closeness to God is reflected in how we treat those who are less fortunate than ourselves. And it's true in both the Old and the New Testament. There's an ancient legend among the Jews that while the Israelites were wandering in the desert, they asked, they wanted to ask God to come over for dinner. 
Their leader, Moses, explained that God is not a physical being, and so he doesn't need to eat. But when Moses went up to the mountain to talk with God, God said to him, he would love to accept the Israelites' dinner invitation. The next day, the Israelites prepared dinner for God. And an old man, poor and hungry, arrived and asked for something to eat. But the Israelites were too busy to give the old man something to eat. That evening, the Israelites looked for God, and they looked for God, and, and they didn't see him. The next morning, Moses went up the mountain and asked God why he had not come for dinner. And God replied, I did come. If you had fed the old man, you would have fed me. Scripture is clear, Old Testament and New. Our closeness to God is reflected in how we treat those less fortunate than ourselves. Evangelist Jim Wallace, who is the author of Sojourner magazine, has an interesting twist on this idea. He says that he often does a little Bible quiz for audience he's speaking to. He asks this one question. What is the most famous biblical text about the poor? He says every time he asks this question, he receives the same answer. Someone will say, raise their hand and say, Jesus said, you will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. Wallace notes that Jesus was speaking to his disciples, and the reason Jesus' disciples will always have the poor with them, Wallace says, is that's their job, to minister to society's outcast. You will always have the poor with you because you are my disciples. You have no choice. Jesus assumed that his followers would be continually ministering to the poor and the downtrodden, and that was their job. Ray Steedman is a pastor with uh, credentials as a conservative evangelical pastor. And yet there's a prayer he always quotes when preaching on this passage. It's a prayer that says out loud what's often really going on in the hearts of Christian people when they think of the poor. Here's part of the prayer. He prays, we miserable owners of ex exceedingly luxurious cars and ever-expanding television screens do most humbly pray for two-thirds of the world's population, which is underfed and undernourished. We know you can do all things, O oh God, that the sick may be visited and the prisoner cared for, the refugee given a home, the naked clothed, the orphan housed, and that we may be allowed to enjoy our own lives in peace. We pray because we know you can do all things, O oh God. O oh, Son of God, we beseech you, we implore you to hear us. Lord, be good to us. Christ, make things easy for us. Lord, deliver us from the necessity of doing anything ourselves for others. Amen. Do you see the satire in the prayer? Praying for the poor, but praying that God will take care of them so that we don't have to bother ourselves. Remember, our closeness to God is reflected in how we treat those less fortunate than ourselves. And the truth is, some of us will not really be that close to God or our fellow man. We will remember them in our prayers, maybe, but not in their actions. This is where the teachings of Jesus quite definitely clash with the values of society and how we view the poor. Scripture is clear. Our closeness to God is reflected in how we treat those less fortunate than ourselves. And this brings us to the final thing to be said. The mark of the followers of Jesus is to be kind, kind and compassionate to all people regardless of their color or their station in life. We are to treat all people with love and respect and to be a servant to all. This is how we show our love for Christ. The story is told that one day a, a woman named Marlon Nance's little daughter, Emma, was playing with her Bible character paper dolls <laughs> when she realized that the, the paper doll character of Jesus was missing. Marlene and Emma looked all over the house, but they couldn't find Jesus anywhere. 
Later that afternoon, Emma came running to her mother with some good news. She had found Jesus. He was in one of her daddy's magazines, and she asked her daddy if she could cut out the picture, and he said yes. And then Emma proudly held out her new picture of Jesus, and Marlene gasped as she took the picture from Emma's hands. It was a picture of a tall, bearded, homeless man dressed in rags. Because of his long hair and beard, he did somewhat resemble Emma's paper doll, Jesus. As Marlene reflected on Jesus' own words about the poor and the powerless, she decided her little girl had indeed found Jesus. Here again, the words of James. My brothers and sisters, believers in our Lord Jesus Christ, we must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you up front, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with your evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, James writes, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? Amen. Amen. Thank you. We continue with our confession of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Let us share the peace of the Lord in sign language by going by putting our hands together. Peace be with you, and also with you. Peace be with you, and also with you. I see a couple people just doing this, and that's okay. And that's still sharing the peace. And maybe I need to do it slower next time. We'll do that again. I want to say thank you to Pastor Barsh for preaching for us today and talking about what he did and talking about the idea that our closeness to God is how we trust, how we treat other people. One of the ways I want to mention to you that we um, know that in the world, um, Jesus said that let the children come to me. The children are very important. And that um, in Psalm 127, children are a blessing and a gift from God. We've seen a lot of um, Afghanistan families and children that need help. I think Hans put in the chat box a link to Lutheran Immigration Services. Um, if you are interested in giving to them for helping with some of the um, Afghan uh, refugees that are in the world. Um, that is one place to, to give your money. Also, the Ministry of Salem Lutheran Church is made possible through your generous financial support. Your financial offering and gifts help us to continue Salem's mission of spreading God's love to the world. We also give our money to the ELCA, which will give money to um, people in the world that need help, like Afghanistani refugees and others. Um, I want to thank you to everyone who gives regularly. We are very grateful for your generosity. If you have never made a financial gift before, we invite you to prayerfully consider supporting our ministry so that you can join us as students of Jesus, rooted in grace, embraced by relationship, engaged in sacred struggle, inspired into wonder, and called to serve God's world. That actually is Salem's mission statement. If you haven't caught that yet, I've been trying to get that in there so that you can hear that's Salem's mission statement. Please donate your financial offering by the, using the Give Plus app on your phone. Go to our church website, salemlutheranglendale.org, or mail a check to the church. 
everything that you give, your time, your talents, and your financial treasures are appreciated. So we want to say thank you. At this time, we have special music uh, by Juliette Alvey, who is going to be sharing her time and her talent with us with the song One Thing Matters. sharing her time and her talents and her beautiful music. Thank you. Let's pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, 
ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Signs of your gracious love, receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time during worship, we have what's called the prayers of the people. And today we are going to offer public prayer petitions. We started this last week. We're gonna to try to continue this. And we call this in confirmation popcorn prayers where prayers pop out of all different places. If you would like to share a public prayer by speaking on the, on the Zoom, please put your hand in a, a raised hand if you can figure out how to do that. Um, and we ask that you submit one sentence prayer request. I also, you can type the prayer requests in the chat box. If you don't get your prayers to us today, you can submit them for next week or um, for prayer, for our prayer team to pray throughout the week. I hope this makes sense. I don't see any raised hands yet and I should have planted a couple of people, but I, but I okay, I see Steve Seekins with one. Let me start the prayers out and then we'll go from there, okay? So you can either raise your hand or there's actually a raise hand feature on the, you on the zoom but I forgot to explain that so we'll we'll go on okay so um I will say Lord in your mercy and you will your responses hear our prayer so let's pray as we are made children and heirs of God's promise we pray for the church the world and all who are in need Steve Seekins if you'd like to unmute yourself and he froze I'll start with a prayer request for the children. Oh, go ahead. Lord, I pray for my business partner, Kathy Luton, who has partner, Kathy Luton, who has had a heart attack and is facing a very difficult surgery. Steve prays for his uh, friend who is having health concerns. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. Vanessa. You may unmute yourself, Vanessa. I pray for my Co-worker Maria Ruiz, they found a tumor on her liver and there's more information to come. Vanessa prays for her friend who has health concerns as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Scott Odall, you can unmute yourself. Lord, we pray for the people of Louisiana who are trying to find food and electricity and recover from the recent hurricane. Scott prays for the people who are recovering from the hurricane. Send them food and shelter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sue Siebels. Lord, we pray for the children that will start school this next week. We pray a blessing on their school year and for good health. We pray for all the children in our in, our, in the United States and in the world who are beginning church uh, school, especially those at Salem School as well. We offer you uh, give them guidance and safety and enthusiasm to begin their year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the people of Afghanistan and in our world who are searching for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Corky has requested prayers for a death in, in the family, that they have peace with that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Kay family requests prayers for family members who are recovering from COVID and other health concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, I thank you for everyone at Salem Lutheran Church and School. I thank you for their um, ministry for you in the world. Help them to share your love with others. Help them to love their neighbor. Help them to understand and help to um, pass along the message that we treat everyone fairly and that we, those of us who need help, that we will be able to help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We continue with our prayer for forgive, for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sin to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. 
Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have, have sinned, made mistakes, and fallen short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sin. Amen. At this time, if you could prepare yourself for Holy Communion, if you have your bread and your, or your cracker, or your wine, or your juice, I say the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. When we are in person, we come to a central table in our worship space. When we worship on Zoom, we come to our tables at home. When we come to these tables, we are joined with all others who do so across time and space. When we gather at our tables to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion, we bring the bread and wine, which are simple signs of God's love and humble signs of human labor. When our congregation gathers for the celebration of Holy Communion, we are un uni united with God in Christ, with each other, and with the church's mission in the world. Please wait until after the Lord's Prayer to eat and drink. At this point, I ask you to hold up your bread if you are participating with me. With thanksgiving, we remember, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And now if you could hold up your drink. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant promise in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Together, let us take our bread and hold it up and we say the words, this is the body of Christ given for me. And we take the wine and say, this is the blood of Christ shed for me. If you are not receiving the communion uh, sacraments today, I wanna to remind you that you are blessed. Jesus loves you now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you. The body of Christ is given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Lord of life, in the giving of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. We have a sending song and then come back for a dismissal. And then if you'd like to stay for an extra 10 minutes for fellowship, I would love to talk to you in a breakout room. Bring forth the kingdom of God.
Thank you. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. We will see you next week, same time, same place. If you'd like to stay around for a uh, little fellowship, please stay for 10 minutes and we'll have a little breakout session. I'm going to do that right now. Put us in breakout rooms.